Perfect, everybody. We're still getting some people in. Great turnout. Hope you guys can all hear me okay. Awesome. Great. Okay, guys, one more minute because I'm seeing people coming in and coming in. So we'll just get in there. Okay, you guys, I think that it is O2 now. So why don't we go and start? And then I'm sure some people will join us along the way. Um, so thank you so much, uh, everybody, for joining. Just to tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Laura Benegatti, and I am the co-founder and CEO of the Artbound Initiative Program. Um, the ABI program is a career accelerator for creatives, for young creatives just like you, students and, and fresh grads as well. Um, and our mission is to really help um, everyone access the industry and, you know, through knowledge, through internships, through career development courses and all of that. So in that uh, capacity today, we have decided to organize a summer internship prep. I know that summer seems far away, but you all need to be on that game already very soon because it's competitive. Um, and we are very fortunate today to have um, two amazing people uh, from our, you know, company network um, that we'll introduce right now. We will, I will talk about, you know, just the rundown of the event quickly, and then I will introduce them. <clears throat> Sorry. So for the event schedule, we're going to first have a chat with Emily and Noah that I'll introduce in a second, um, get a little bit of like insider perspective about what they're doing, what they're looking for in their interns and juniors. You'll have an you know, a great opportunity to ask questions. So I want you guys to be asking questions on the chat, please. No unmuting, unfortunately, because 35 people is too many to unmute. Um, but please go ahead and, and start typing your questions in the chat. And then Emily and Noah hopefully will answer some of them. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit more about the, in, the Art Bond Initiative program, what we're doing, you know, what is our internship program, what's our curriculum like, and, you know, what are the opportunities that you might have through our program. So that's gonna be the rundown of the event. So without further ado, I wanna start introducing Noah, uh, who is the CEO of the Pitch Agency. I'm just showing you a little video of this. So Pitch, is, Pitch was founded in 2020 and Pitch is Melbourne based. It's a digital marketing agency and they're basically specializing in helping businesses grow their brands, grow their, you know, their, their, their business as well. So, you know, of course, Noah will introduce a little bit more about Pitch, but it's been an incredible partner of ours. Um, and I know that their office is super cool and we know a lot of our interns who, who went there. So definitely eager to, to, you know, for you guys to hear more about what Noah has to say and about pitch. And then we have Emily, who is production. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Collider is a creative collective based in Sydney. They also have uh, some antennas in Melbourne, New Zealand, and New York. And they're a film production company and also a design studio that collaborates with artists and musicians. They had like big clients like Apple and others. So I'm excited also for Emily to tell us a bit more about what Collider does. And I think Pitch and Collider are both incredible companies because they're you know, doing some things that have a lot of synergies with each other, but also in a very different way, right? And and kind of also touching different industries. So guys, I will actually remove this so that we can just be the, the three of us here. Let me just stop sharing my screen right now. And I've spot I, I spotlighted both you, Emily and, and Noah. So first of all, thank you so much, both of you for, for being here. We really appreciate your time. We know how busy both of you are. So it's uh, we're very fortunate to have you. Um, perhaps I will start with you, Emily, and I would love for you to tell us a little bit maybe about Collider. Like, what do you guys 
what do you guys do? What's, you know, what's the day to day like at Collider? Mm -hmm. um, well, it really is a multifaceted company. So we have the film production side of the company in a design studio that focuses on like experiential work and you know the production side does like high-end tvcs music videos um short films longer narrative films um and then the design studio do a heap of they do a lot of different things that I still am figuring out day to day, but things like, you know, book design, title sequences for series, um, immersive experiences and installations. Like they recently did an installation at UNSW where it was about technology and the environment kind of existing together. And you would go there and you would see big projections and you could interact with the art. Um, but day to day, yeah, like my side is the production element where we're working on shoots so it's like we did we've done things for Nike Apple Tag Hoya, and um, it's just really fun because you're working collaboratively and also like with bringing your own skill um, to make these shoots happen that's so awesome so you have both the design studio really and the production facilities and it's all kind of like handled so it's it's two really separate kind of departments I mean, they are separate entities, but we do sometimes come together where we might work on a shoot for Nike, for example, and then we do some of the post in the design studio. So these guys are doing things in post like the CGI and the the, the grading and the editing and also in their own right, their own projects. Um, but there, there does exist those two kind of different distinct sides. But yeah, sometimes we do come together and, you know, even if you're bidding for a job, which is where you're presenting your idea and trying to win it, um, sometimes we'll create a presentation together um, to show how we could, how we can like visualize this and make this happen with those two kind of sides. Super cool. I love, I love that. And I love that you guys are also able to come together some, for some pitch or for some projects. So that's mm -hmm. really exciting. Thank you, Emily, for telling us. I'm going to come back to you, of course, in a second. Noah, tell us everything about, give us the pitch about pitch. We want to know. The, the, the pitch about pitch. Thank you, Laura. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, look, at, at pitch, we really specialize in, in growth and acquisition. Um, so understanding how we can leverage uh, the best digital channels to suit business objectives and needs. And I, I guess a big thing for us is no two client engagements are the same. Um, whether we're working with small, medium, large, we've got quite a lot of B2B compared to B2C, e-com, lead-based, so many businesses have unique and specific needs. Um, so what we try to you know really specialise in is making sure that there is an offering that suits everybody. Sometimes they require you to do everything end to end. Sometimes you're plugging in and working with existing marketing departments, other, you know, collaborating with other creative agencies, every engagement looks different. Um, so we really just try to make sure that there's the right strategic advice um, and really a good engagement for us means that over the journey and over a few years, we effectively become, you know, a, a company's like in-house digital consultant to really guide them through lots of areas. So some areas where we provide service and support and, and, and stand stuff, whether it's organic or paid or performance or content or data, whatever it is. And then for some clients, we just, we end up sitting in a consulting capacity where they will use a lot of other suppliers or do things internally, but it's just good to have trusted people that have the best interests of the business in mind. So most of our clients have been our clients for five, 10 years plus. There's really kind of longstanding, strong relationships here. And I, I think in this world where a lot of businesses could gain so much value if they just had a little bit more insight and understanding about what they should do from a digital perspective, a, a really good job for us and a, a really good client relationship for us is when we can provide that kind of insight to the clients we work with. That's, that's amazing. And I think, you know, every company uh, should have, uh, you know, should really up their game in all the digital marketing side, right? Because it's, it's so foreign to, to many of us and to many businesses. Can you tell us just one second, because I feel like it is such a gray w word a little bit, like, What's digital? I mean, I'm sorry to ask you that, and we're not for like we're not doing your lecture here, and maybe you, <laughs> maybe you have a one minute solution for us. But can you explain yep. to us very quickly what what is digital marketing? Like, what does that what does that mean? Okay, so if I'm going to go like a, just a very quick definition, I would say being able to present your offering in the best possible way to a targeted audience so that you're making the most of the money investment and time you're putting into presenting your business in the right way. Gotcha. And that comes through. So that, that could be, that could be Google, that could be social channels, that could be 
EDM customer journey strategies. That could be inbound people that are coming to your website. That could be, you know, above the line stuff. And, and usually, for holistically, it's usually a mix of a whole bunch of different touch points along the way right. in order to get the results. And really, I think the thing that, that stands digital out from other more traditional forms of media is it's trackable and measurable. And so that delivers a certain kind of certainty, not just in what you get back from it, but gives people the ability to improve it over time because you've, you've got the data. Makes perfect sense. Thank you so much, because I feel like that's a question that a lot of our students, you know, and, and fresh grads, they, they, they studied marketing or some of them studied communications and other areas. And they're like, hey, I, digital marketing is such a buzzword, right? Everybody, everybody yeah. wants to work now in digital marketing. So I think it was good for us to kind of hear a little bit more about it. So, so thanks, Noah. Um, Emily, tell us a little bit about like, what is it like to work at Collider? What's the company culture? Like, how big are you guys? Like, what are the, you know, do you guys have offices, like production studios? How, how are you guys set up? So our main office is here in Sydney and that's day to day. We probably have um, 10 to 15 in-house people. And then the way a shoot will work is that we bring on freelancers. So we might bring on a freelance production manager or producer. It depends on the budget and the, the kind of scale of the actual, the, the shoot. Um, but in terms of the culture, when I think of work, I genuinely think that it is not only like a you know, a dedicated, hardworking, driven place, but it is fun. Like I love coming to work. Everyone is so committed, but also really encouraging and supportive. Um, as I mentioned earlier, like we all do have these like defined roles, but, and you can bring your personality to that, but you're, you're also always working together. And I think that Collider's really nailed having like a really nice supportive environment for people to kind of you know, allow themselves to have fun and be them, be unique and, you know, try things and, and not be scared, um, which is something that always used to intimidate me. I was like, you know, how, how can I bring a skill to it? But honestly, it was just like being myself and um, being a nice person and hardworking. Um, we also do have offices based in Melbourne. If we have shoots there, we'll, we'll, we bring in producers that we have down there. Um, we have an office in New York and we have an office in Auckland, which we recently opened. And they kind of work in a very similar manner to how the office in Sydney works, where we have in-house people and then bring on and attach people to certain jobs. Makes sense, right? And it's very traditional in those, in those industries that you can't have like everybody staffed already because it depends on projects right sometimes you have to size up you have to size down so you work a lot with freelancers which I think is cool for everybody here to to also hear about right because we're talking about internships we're talking about like junior positions but also let's not forget about freelance opportunities so just food for thought for some of your questions later um thanks Emily I think that's very insightful to hear also that there are some good freelancing opportunities Noah, what's it like, like, you know, to come and work at, at Pitch? You guys are like startup vibe, right? 2020 is still relatively fresh. Like, how does that translate on the day to day? Well, it's actually interesting because what Emily said really resonated with me that she felt like she could be herself. Um, when I started my career a long time ago now, my first proper job was I was a commercial lawyer for a period of time. So I went into an old school law firm in the CBD, work your way up through the hierarchical chains and I, something that really stuck out with me was you kind of put on a suit and put on a persona of the person that you needed to be in that office to succeed. And I was always determined that when I eventually would run my own business, found my own agency, that just wouldn't be the case. Like you had to be yourself. Like what you do at work doesn't define you and it, it doesn't really stick to you, but you're spending a lot of time in your day, forging relationships with people, putting things out there, putting yourself out there to have the confidence to be in an environment where you can genuinely be yourself um, is really important to us as well. So I guess, I've, look, I've got a bit of a teaching background as well. What was really important to us was to really have a supportive and collaborative workplace. You know, we, we've got a saying here that you could be an intern on your first day that you've joined a workshop or a client meeting or a strategy session. If your idea makes sense, it doesn't matter what the most senior person in the room or the senior strategist on that decides to do or wants to do with a campaign, everyone's opinion is valid. Every idea can be a good idea. And even more so, you kind of constantly need new and fresh ideas in the mix to stay fresh and to stay current in, in an environment where things are really changing all the time. So probably, you know, we've got a really big growth mindset. We empower our people to learn. We encourage our people to learn. And more than anything else, probably just a, a really proactive and collaborative environment. 
which is hard in the remote hybrid world of post-COVID. You know, it's a little bit of a challenge. We have, it's a full hybrid workplace. Most people work from home a few days a week, come into the central office a few days a week. We've also got offices in a, a few locations around Melbourne. So probably the challenge is fostering that real sense of um, real genuine collaboration at a time when you're in the office, you're remote, you're hybrid, you're all around. So um, it's something we're always working on. I think that's a that's a real concern. I mean, I think it's a it's a real challenge for all of all of us, right? That are running businesses is how to kind of maintain the sense of of community and and of like you know common goal when everybody's a bit scattered, right? And not everybody's yeah. in the in the office at the same time. But but it seems great. One thing that I want to tell everybody because uh, Hara just got a question from from one of our attendees. When I'm talking about junior, just to kind of exp just to kind of explain a little bit. When I'm talking about junior, I mean um, junior employees. So it means like people that are in their first few years, you know, so typically you would have junior employees, you would have mid-level employees, and then you would have senior uh, level. So I just wanted to kind of uh, explain that term of junior. So I don't mean necessarily like uh, young kids or anything like that. I mean, junior level employees, first few years in your career. Uh, just a little, a little side note. Um, so I guess... I think a question that I feel like is so important to everybody here, um, and I'm sure Noah, Emily, you've been through that same kind of struggle, and I have as well, is when you're starting your career and you're still you're still a student, you just graduated, like you don't have much experience, you know, you you're there's not there's not a huge like difference factor from like you know other resumes, right? You probably all like did maybe one internship if you're lucky, or a couple, uh, maybe you had some really good like you know, school projects. So my question to both of you is what do you feel, what do you feel like are really important attributes or skills or personality traits that you're looking for in junior employees, in interns, um, you know, that might differentiate them from others perhaps. Um, so maybe just to kind of switch it up a bit, like Noah, why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what your thoughts are around the subject? And then Emily, I'd love to hear about you know, your your take on it too. No problem. Um, look, we've had a number of interns come through Pitch, even in the, the two and a half years we've been open. Um, quite a few of them are, are from Laura and ABI, which is fantastic. Um, the, the interns that that where, where it's most successful, probably I, I think the biggest thing is is that growth mindset, the, the capacity and the want to learn and also proactivity. And, and it's hard. Sometimes people need to come out of their shell personally. Sometimes it's a new experience for others, but you're all obviously talented to have already gotten to where you've gotten. Um, what we really try to do is whether we need to give a little bit of confidence or whether we can sense there's confidence coming. I think just to want to get your hands dirty, to want to be really proactive and to give things a go, because especially in this climate and the world we're facing, giving things a go, whether you pass, you fail, you give it a crack, you, you learn more from doing that than you do from, you know, conservatively just staying in your area of expertise. So some people come here and their skill is writing or their skill is design or their skill is data analytics understanding and the successful interns say, you know what, I've got that, but I want to learn about everything you do. Whereas some just stay in their shell and just want to stay to their core area. So if you're going to take anything from that, I think internships will provide you the ability to be proactive. I think you try to grab it with both hands. I think that's a I think that's a great uh, that's a great advice because a lot of us specifically when we started sometimes we're scared of like crossing the line of or showcasing too much initiative so it's cool to hear that actually proactiveness is is valued and and encouraged uh, obviously in the right settings right it's always a fine line and you always need to be careful of remembering your place too but you know the hunger and the willingness to do is something that I think employers really value right compared to maybe others so I think that's a that's a great point Emily what's what's your take on that like what what are you looking for I like I totally agree with Noah with the whole growth mindset and being open-minded and I think it's just about don't devalue what you can bring like maybe you haven't had an internship before or you haven't worked in the industry before but you can be open to opportunities and be willing to learn things um you again you might not have done anything before but you can still bring a skill you can still bring something from yourself to the job like for example I didn't know in design which is a 
um, a software, like a fancy PowerPoint. Sorry to people who probably use it more than me. And that's if there's a better explanation, but I learned it on the job and I'm proficient and I'm using it and it's fun. And it was always really intimidating. Um, you know, for us, things like that are really beneficial. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you and say that that wouldn't help you in this industry. Um, but again, you can learn it on the job. So I think, yeah, just being open and willing, um, attention to detail is great. Um, yeah, but just like valuing, your, valuing yourself and knowing that you can bring something to the table, bring a skill to the table, show us you can do something, um, trust yourself because I guarantee you, you all have a unique skill, um, that you can utilize and that other people would love. And it might be, not the right fit at one company, but you will be the right person for another company. And it's just about kind of um, allowing yourself to try those different things. I love that. So trying to find like some skill sets that you can maybe build up that, you know, might be a little bit of an add-on as well, right? To like maybe a producer might not have had in design, but then like the fact that they would have that would help to like build out some pitch decks or is that is that kind of what what you what you're mentioning like finding potentially also an add-on skill to the regular kind of toolkit that somebody would have typically for those types of jobs? Yeah, I mean, I guess with when you come to this, you do have a certain level of understanding of things. Like I'm sure you're all quite proficient in Microsoft Office, but you know how often did we use Excel in between high school? And I don't know where you're at, but I didn't use it for a long time. And then I find myself doing documents and call sheets and um, booking things for shoots. Then I'm using it again. So it might be something that you do know, but then you can grow from. And then definitely like learning new things like Adobe Creative Cloud, like you dabble in something thing but then you end up using it more and really kind of like learning more than you ever might have thought um but yeah you can always already have a skill but then you can always keep growing and um not limit yourself to something you already know I love that uh and the excel thing is like so real and like I feel like nobody's telling you how much you're going to use excel no matter what you do somehow in your career so just guys like think about it um so I think I think that's that I think that's great advice. Noah, what if if you had to redo it again? I mean, or I mean, you have here forty five people, you know, that are in the beginning of their careers. Um, and and sorry to ask for like, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but like, what are some advice, you know, that you might have for them, like, whether it's going to be on how they present themselves, on like how they how they search for those opportunities, um, you know, if if you had the chance to kind of talk to yourself again. When, when you started, like what, what would be the, the things that like we're gatekeeping as seniors and not telling like our next generation? Good question. Um, I think I would tell myself to learn as much as I can about things, eat career paths and disciplines and things that, I, that I'm not necessarily an expert in. You become invaluable to an organization when you have a number of strings to your bow. And especially in, in a lot of industries, especially in the industry in which I play, so much is connected and so many elements of what you put forward are so connected with other things that people with that all-round knowledge um, are more valuable, have an ability earlier on in their careers to even be able to look at things more strategically and less kind of stuck in the mud, which I think just gives you a really good chance to advance earlier in your career. Um, as a business owner, you can tell straight away the people who have the mindset to eventually be able to look at things commercially outside of their area of expertise and understand how that fits in and what finding that balance between what makes sense for the, the client or the project or the campaign, but finding that spot in the Venn diagram where it also makes sense for the business and the commercials make sense. Um, and I think if you can approach things from that perspective, you'll find that um, you become very valuable to a business. I love that. I think that's that's very tangible, uh, tangible advice. And I hope you guys are taking like a couple notes. But again, we'll resend all of that if you want to, you know, digest it and like uh, and kind of take take some of those, you know, main pointers. Emily, I guess same question to you. And then I have some great questions already in the chat that I'm going to start asking. But but Emily, same question to you. Like what you know, what what, what did you wish you knew when you started, you know, when uh, you had that first internship and then afterwards you get this real like collider? Oh my God, that is a very good question. Um, 
I guess I wish I knew that it was going to be okay because it does seem like a very hard industry to crack. Um, but it was a lot of persistence and patience um, and you, you, there's no right or wrong path or answer to do it. Your path will look different to others. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it is true. And I think I really um, wish I felt that at the time because it did seem so far away at times for me. But um, little did I know, like, you know, a few months later, I would get this job and, and love it and kind of look back and be like, oh, that was you know, that was just my experience and journey with it. Um, but yeah, just being again, open and patient and hardworking um, and, and bringing, offer your services, offer what you can do to people, try and meet people as much as you can in any way you can. Like um, there's, yeah, you, you can't really do anything wrong in, in a weird way. Like um, as long as you're being authentic and um yeah, just like being honest in what you want to do. I, I don't think you can go wrong there with who you are. I love that. I think it's, uh, I think, I think that it's good now that we're, we're pushing that, you know, more and more for people to be more authentic, right? Before we're all giving a script. Now we're encouraged to kind of be a bit more of ourselves. So, so guys, I have some great questions in the chat here and, and some of them, um, some of them are more relating to the program as well. So we'll answer them a little bit later, but I want to kind of focus on those for Emily and Noah. So there's a couple of great questions from, from Kristen that's, that's asking, you know, what, what would an intern be doing, you know, in, in your companies, right? Like what, what are the typical tasks that they would be doing? Uh, so perhaps I think that would give a, a great insight. So maybe Emily, um, you know, if, if there was an intern coming to Collider, like what typically would they be handling? For sure. So we'll, I'll do both sides of the company. So we'll start with the production side. You, you might be doing things like um, seeing crew avails, which is crew availability in the sense that you need to book your crew for a shoot and there are, you need to see who's available on certain days. So you'd be ringing their agents. Um, you'll be helping with the schedules of the shoot. So you might have a two-day shoot, which requires pre-production for, say, five weeks and then post. So you'll be helping the producers create that. Um, you'll be doing research. They might need to know how much is this going to cost to go to a location in Melbourne, in Sydney. Um, so lots of research, lots of booking, um, lots of phone calls to see what's out there. Um, and then in the studio side, I mean, in the production side, there's a lot of creative elements as well. Um, but in the studio side, you might be doing things like visual research, um, presentation decks, pitch decks, you know, that's where you can kind of have your keen eye for detail as well. And creativity comes through with the images, um, helping directors with that creative treatment, which is their visual idea of how they're going to do the job and how they're selling themselves. So you can really help on both sides. Um, and they really do kind of influence each other. That's amazing. I love, I love hearing that because I think people like, uh, need to hear what, what the internships are about. Um, Noah, what about you? Like what, what, and of course I know it's going to be different departments too, but what, what would an intern do at pitch? Okay. Well, it's a really good time. Cause I, I met with an intern yesterday and worked through her plan for the next few days. So it's really good to go with a, a practical example. So um, she did competitor analysis that we needed for a proposal to a potential new client in a sales deck. Um, she also had a hand at research that we needed to put together a few slides for a half-day brand workshop that we were running. Um, also had a crack at modifying because we always want to improve the um, chat GPT prompts that we've engineered to put together storyboarding, creative ideation for a monthly um, social media plan. And then we compare it with what the strategists would recommend themselves and see if there's any crossover and how much we can lean into that. Um, and finally got into platform with a specialist learning a little bit about uh, paid ads, meta paid ads, I think specifically in Insta, and is going to come to the client presentation where we present the results. So we really just try to throw everything at people. Um, this particular person was content, is her expertise. So it really made sense for some of it. And some of it was outside of her skill set. But like we said, the, we, we definitely want exposure to a whole range of areas and particularly how it all kind of fits in together. Super cool that they were also able to kind of sit in and, and listen to kind of like some of the clients' presentations, right? That's that's rare opportunities for interns uh, to be able to have a peek on those types of, of key meetings. Um, a really good question from Sri 
is saying like, and and I totally understand the struggle. She's saying a lot of, or he, sorry, or they, um, a lot of the company require years of experience in the industry. As someone who is going to be a fresh grad soon, how do you go about getting those opportunities? It's true, right? It always says like three to five years of experience preferred. So maybe, you know, Emily, what what what's your take on that? Like, how, how do you get through that? You know, because you're, you have no experience. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just about um, in being persistent, you know, you can email companies with your CV and, you know, you can say, I love film and I, I love this X, Y, Z, which is great. We obviously are all very passionate about film in this particular industry, but it's also, yeah, again, selling yourself and your skills and being a bit more than just saying what you love and can do. It's being like, you know, are you free? I would love to meet you if you have the capacity, which yes, we're busy. Um, we've got all these things going on, but they guarantee you when they have the time like the producers the execs me if we when and if and when we have the time we will try and make that happen as well like we love that people wanting to reach out and, and meet us face to face so it's yeah I guess in the element where I said be engaging and open and put yourself out there it's like take it one step further ask for what you want as well as saying what you can do um I can totally relate to that I remember sending out emails to companies before I worked at Collider I I did um this random you know proofreading for a a magazine in Europe because I knew that I could utilize the time difference and the time zone when they would be asleep, I would proofread their documents. So little things like that, like you can just offer your services, offer things and people really value that. And it you might not get a particular job out of that, but you might as well, but it also might lead to another job. Um, so yeah, never, there's never a dead end. Um, but yeah, trying to get a face to a name is really really um helpful i think in this sort of circumstance that's that's great to hear quick follow-up question and then i'll go to noah just um because i know we gotta we're gonna we we have to stay on schedule as well and we have about like uh three to five minutes more are you ever having interns remotely i see a lot of questions about that like are you having any interns remotely at collider um and is there any pre prerequisite types of degrees to to intern or to work at collider um, no, I think you can come with all different skill sets and all different degrees. I did an international studies degree and then film, um, and that hasn't, you know, affected me negatively. Like Noah said, he came from a, a law degree, which is all finance. Sorry, Noah, one of, both very, one of them, and very interesting <laughs> in utilizing that skill. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, yes, you can be remote for sure in the element of being freelance, you know, you would get sent a link to work off the files. Um, we have zoom meetings. So yeah, I, I definitely like being remote is not a disadvantage at all. Great. Great. And then same questions to, you Noah. I guess those three, right. The remote, the degrees, and then perhaps, um, you know, how do you how do you get those jobs like when everybody's looking for years of experiences? And I think, guys, that will probably conclude that first part and then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the program. So, Noah, please, we'd love your insights on all of those. No problem. Okay, so I'll start at the end because I think that's the order you said them in. Uh, remote, yes, no issue for us. We're a full hybrid organization. People can work remotely. We've done remote internships, both uh, with people in Australia who've like done three, four month inter internships and then maybe just come to Melbourne for a week but we've also done fully remote internships with people overseas. So that's no issue. Um, as far as the degrees, I don't know if this is gonna be particularly popular what I got to say, but I barely look at what someone did at uni and what their degree is. I, I look at any work they've done. I look at anything they've done for themselves. I look at what they can put out for themselves, how they present themselves, um, which is funny because I, I did three degrees at uni. So I, I, even though I spent nine years there, um, doing a lot of work and doing a lot of that. I, it's amazing. I don't value that very highly. I value the person and their experience. I think the the more time goes on, the, the less and less that is um, genuinely relevant to me. Um, what was the last one? What do you need to do the to stand one, out? So yeah, the, the how do you get these opportunities? I, I, I think just be creative. I know we're speaking to a bunch of creatives, so that should work quite well. Um, you, you do need to stand out, especially when you have no experience, maybe an internship or two behind you if you're lucky and no practical experience anywhere. I think you just got to stand out. People, you know, the right kind of employers and the right kind of organizations will value people that have that, you know, go get it attitude. There's someone in my company, I've worked with him for about five or six years, he's my COO. We're actually going to America on Sunday, going on a two week 
AI learning expedition, conferences, seminars, workshops. He submitted a CV for an account manager role. I didn't look twice at it. He was at the bottom of the pile, but wrote me the best LinkedIn in-mail message I've ever got. And I interviewed him the next day and he's worked with me for six years. Wow. We've had people for creative jobs and content jobs that I wouldn't look twice at their CV. I know I saw that name and rejected it. But then all of, all of a sudden there's an email in my inbox where they've gone and proactively suggested what a campaign rollout for one of my clients that they saw on my website would be. Like there are ways that you can get people's attention. You've just got to think outside the box. Yes, you could do it 10 times and nine of them could be a complete waste of your time. But if that's what you need to do in order to get noticed, I just want to let you know from the other side that that can be very powerful when it gets in front of the right people. I love that. And by the way, guys, if you go on our YouTube channel, we have a webinar around demystifying the job search that says exactly that, which is like stop applying to 100 companies online, apply to 10, but do like the most amazing job and like, you know, blow people's mind and you'll probably have the same amount of interviews than if you did those 100 te templated applications. So no, Emily, thank you so much for, for you know, um, your insights that, that's been so valuable to us. And we're going to, you know, go and introduce a little bit more about the program. We have a lot of questions there as well, so people can understand how to, you know, get access to those opportunities as well. Um, really, really value your time, guys. And also, please, everybody, go and check Pitch and Collider on their socials, like if you're interested in companies, like go and interact with their LinkedIn, with their socials, like start following what they're putting out there. It's really important. So thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, Laura. It's been a pleasure. And thanks, Emily. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank, okay. thank you, everybody. We'll stay on. We'll stay on with uh, with now. We'll move on to the program. I'll go ahead and, okay. and highlight Ina, who is um, our head of admission so that she can introduce a little bit more about the program. I see you have a lot of questions around it too. So we'll go ahead. Ina, are you able to share your screen? Uh, let me just check one second. Great. Hello everyone. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, so far so good. Awesome, great. Bye Emily. All right, so guys, just, uh, just a little bit of an intro. We'll talk about the program for 10 minutes. And afterwards, we'll go ahead and address all the questions that you have, because I know you have a lot. I've seen a lot in the chat. So and then afterwards, we can just chat casually. OK, now, if you want to ask any questions you might have, we can tell you more insider perspective about Pitch and Collider, too, because we know them well. So if you guys have also questions that you have about them, feel free. So, Ina, it's yours. Floor is yours. Thank you. Perfect. And you can see it. OK, the presentation's coming up clear. Yep, it is. Perfect. So hi everyone, my name is Ina, I'm the head of admissions here with Art Bound Initiative. I'm also an alumna of the program, so I'm one of the OGs into the program way back in the day in Berlin, and I'm still actually living here to this day. Um, we have, you know, such a cool alchemy of both local and international programs, but today we're really going to focus on what we have available to y'all in Australia um to actually do do the program yourself so as you've already heard uh through this presentation with our our partner companies you know our whole premise is to really help students and recent grads break into the creative industry so our whole premise is to be a career accelerator we want to set you up with the foundation and skills to be able to launch your career and ask those questions in a space with you know both career coaches and industry professionals who are active in the industry and so throughout the our whole time we've, we've placed over 600 interns we have over 300 partner companies and we do have a 60 percent hire rate of our participants getting hired after their internships um, from the companies that they're placed with either at full-time or freelance level we've also had a, a magnitude of students who end up back at the companies that they intern with years later um, which we'll find always through a fun little like search of like oh who's at the company and go oh they're ours. So it really allows for connections to be made and continued, not only as like a student, but also as you're launching your career. Um, we place in kind of five key areas, so advertising, communications, design, 
fashion, entertainment and media and fine arts. So for advertising communications, you know, we're really placing like PR, marketing, uh, digital marketing, as you just heard, right? Social media management, content creation and production, event management, project management, strategy, and a little bit of photography. We also place in design. So your motion, your graphic, your UI, UX, um, your branding, your web design and layout design. For fashion, we do everything from marketing to wholesale to trend forecasting, and even at times styling and talent management. Uh, styling is definitely a little bit more limited, but you know, a lot of trend forecasting, wholesale, that's what you're going to be using a lot in your career, right? So there's really good opportunities. You're going to see talent management again in entertainment and media. This is often a really overlooked position for someone who's looking to do like pre-production or even just like know what it's like to be a director because you're able to meet not only the talent, but also the crews uh, in, in a variety of different industries. So we have like TV production, film, theater production, animation, script development, and then your post productions, your VFX, your 2D, your 3D animation. We do have music business and publishing. Um, and then we also have, like I said earlier, the fine arts, right? So this is for students who are maybe like history majors or who are uh, studying fine arts or art history. So we have studio art, art studio management, art admin, uh, gallery and curation marketing, and also graphic design and writing in like fine arts spaces. So I'm seeing a lot of questions roll in. We are going to go over questions in just a little bit. So hang tight. And I'm super excited to answer all those questions for, for you as we go through. So for our program, you're guaranteed an internship. Um, we will reach out not only to our network, but beyond. We have full transparency with our company database that you'll be able to see while you're in the placement process. Uh, we do the placement after our coaching, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, and this allows you to really go with your best foot forward. And we also prep you with how to have professional interviews and you'll be interviewing with companies directly um, after these mock interviews, after us prepping you. So you get full like scope of not only who we'll be reaching out to, but also how um, you can really stand out in your interview. Now, you probably just heard me mention coaching. So we do 50 hours of professional development per intern, and this happens within the first month upon acceptance. So we, during this time, we're going to revamp your profile, right? Resume review, portfolio review done by industry professionals, professional certif like certified resume writers. We're going to do full skill assessment and building. So we're going to look at like, okay, what are your strengths of character? What's your strength of, you know, your work ethic? Where do your strengths lie? That might not even be things that you register as skills. We're going to also build up like how to have a, like how to build your professional network from scratch, you know, online presence and self-promotion, how to curate your elevator pitch. We're going to go over the fundamentals of being a young employee. So, you know, how not to piss off your boss, but still understand what you need to be doing for your job, right? Communication management styles, how to recognize them, respond professionally, and also like things like how to reduce burnout, how to write a business email. So we're going to go all through like just how to be a young employee, how to find your space within companies and how to really like like we said earlier, really put your best foot forward and, and be able to, you know, long-term goals, we would love for you to get hired on by these companies that you're placed with. We can't guarantee it always, but that's that's our goal, right? Really optimize your chances of getting hired or recommended later. And you do this with a dedicated coordinator who will be with you through the whole process from acceptance all the way to the end of your internship. They'll also be there for any advice you need while interning and helping you navigate any situation that arises. You also have an in-city coordinator who knows the city by heart for both Melbourne and Sydney. They're both uh, actually alum of the program as well, and they're in the creative industry. So they they get it, right? They're, they're right there with you. And we do have a certificate of completion that you get at the end. And so this all happens on our on our online portal. So the coaching is all done virtually. We have 10 different course levels that breaks down into like over 14 career resources. There's assignments and quizzes you'll be doing, um, but it's very easy to follow and very able to fit around your own time. Like if you're working a casual job or if you're going to school while doing it. And then we have our network. Um, so our network spans across all of our destinations and virtually. We have a combination of in-person meetups, which are everything from, you know, community culture, 
coffee, dinner, drinks, artist studio visits, gallery tours, and shows to our online platform, which you're seeing, click on the screen there. Uh, this is solely for our participants and alum, but you have access to this throughout the launch of your career. As long as you want to stay a part of the network, you have access to it. So you have, as well in this online portal, you have workshops, you have webinars, you have industry talks, and every single month, we post a job and internship list dedicated just to our alum, featuring positions in our destinations, but also virtually as well. And you can attend any of our meetups in any of our destinations across the globe. So let's say you do your internship in Melbourne. You stay in Melbourne while you're going to school, you're still attending the meetups and you pop over to Berlin, right? You can, join, you can go to our meetups in Berlin. So it really allows you to stay a part of a community that's constantly growing and really has people across all different levels of the industry. My crew are now all like mid to senior levels or have our own production companies and you'd be able to talk to them too. So there's a nice chat feature as well. Now for our program, we do have a tuition. Um, now our tuition for local and virtual is 2,250 USD. If you're wondering about the price, we price this very much to a single credit at American universities because we are an American company, right? So we base it off of uh, the US education system in that way because you do get out of it as much as like a class in university. The average student is with us for about five to six months if they're doing local or even nine months if they're going international. And during that time, you're getting the continued support of our of your you know, coordinator. Um, you're having the coaching, continued lessons, and, and like we said earlier, access to these events. And that stays with you throughout. Like there's no additional fee to stay a part of the network. So it really does allow for an investment to be made. I think that when I did it, it, every penny was still worth it. I'm still utilizing the coaching that I had from my advisor uh, way back in the day. So that's kind of the overview. That tuition includes everything we just discussed. Um, and yeah, and we even have, if you are relocating, so let's say you're like living in, in Brisbane and you want to go to Melbourne and you don't have housing there, we do have like resources to help you get acclimated to the city, such as housing that you can you can utilize that's separate from the program. Okay, so um, we're going to, oh, and this is also just more of a breakdown so you understand the fees. I just went through. Now for our application, this is found directly on our website. It's quite easy to follow. I'm actually going to show you exactly where you can find it. This way, if you're like super excited and you're like, okay, I wanna, I wanna do this for sure. And it's, you know, the applications are due quite soon, right? So you're gonna go to Artbound Initiative slash apply okay and all of the requirements on here is on our right top hand corner of our website which is artboundinitiative.com and what we're going to need from you is a resume you know include all of your experience right we're going to need so we can see whether it's related or not related we want to see everything you've done because we're going to help you refine that in our program um we also would like need to see your portfolio for some majors not all of them if you have questions of if you need a portfolio for your major or not don't hesitate to ask us if you're marketing you don't but if you want to make content you would so it's it's pretty intuitive if you make a portfolio for your course make a portfolio for us um we need two references so the names of persons we can get in touch with um and their emails and then we need for you to answer these three short essay questions the essay is maximum 750 words so very very much something you could bang out in in a weekend if you wanted to okay and you would apply here where it says start your application now like we said earlier applications are going to be due on the 31st for our Australian summer program um, for Melbourne and Sydney and virtually as well now, if you're wondering if we have scholarships, so we do. So we've awarded over 60 grand in scholarships since 2016. We have our ambassador scholarship, which is up to 500 for the local and up to 1,000 for the international. And for this, um, you know, you will need to apply for it as well in our application form. There's also a second set of questions that you'll need to answer and really show how you would be an ambassador to the program. I myself was an ambassador recipient. Um, and it's also cool because it, it does allow you to also like meet new people as well. Um, so it gives it a nice competitive edge when you're another resume builder on top of the certificate for, for the program too. Perfect. All right. 
we're going to open it up to a QA. and a And while we're doing that, if you have any questions or if you found this really interesting, so this is my direct call link. Um, and I would love to get on a call with you. We can discuss your personalized placement plan, like placement options. We can talk about uh, which destination would be best for you based off your interests. Since every city has a little slightly different alchemy, we can talk about also other programs and like our international, um, if you're also interested in that as well, um, and so forth. So while we're going through the q and I'm going to keep up this QR code and um, definitely, definitely book a call to discuss um, if you want like more in-depth personalized info, but just also too, if you want to show interest in our program, book the consultation while you're filling out the application, right? That would be my best, best recommendation. All right. So let's Thank you, Nina. go. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take over for the Q&A because I've been Perfect. on the chat if you don't mind. So I'll go ahead and answer directly all the questions that people are, are answering. So thank you so much, Ina, for, for introducing a bit more, you know, the program. So just a, a real, a quick recap, as you guys understood, we have destinations in Melbourne and Sydney. If you can't move, if you're in Tasmania, for example, and you don't want to do it, you can do remote. Okay. We have a virtual program. And then we also have programs overseas. Okay. So New York, Los Angeles, Berlin, um, so if, you, if you're interested in that, just let us know. So a couple of questions that, that arrived here. So Jocelyn is asking at what stage of the degree would be best to start doing this? That's, it's a great question. Um, I would definitely say that best is from your second year onward. We don't take first year students. Um, if you are in your first year now, great. It means you're already a step ahead. But you're, it's not, you know, it's you're, we're going to wait a little bit for, for you to apply. So second year, third year, fourth year, master's, fresh grad, you know, up to three, three years of your graduation, uh, we, can, we can still do the program. Um, so some people asked about questions just so that I, <laughs> sorry, so I can answer them about photography and media. We have opportunities in, in photography, more in like content production, uh, photography production. We have some internships as well in um, editorial, so if you want to be writing for magazines, but we don't have too much in like broadcasting, for example. Uh, if you want to do like news journalism, we don't have uh, as much. Some people were asking about degrees, like what degrees are possible for this program. Um, honestly, if you're going to do it locally or virtually, your degree, um, as Noah said, actually, is, is, is less a little bit less relevant to us. Um, so you could be from a business background. If you want to do something in communications, that's totally fine. Um, if you are in nursing, it might be a bit more complex, right? So I think we do want to look at your degree and ask us the question. If you if you have you know if you're not sure, um, tell us right what your degree is. We can advise. That's why we have this link right now for you to book a call with Ina. So you can call Ina and be like, Hey Ina, I'm studying this. I'm thinking about doing this and that, what do you think? And Ina can advise. She knows everything about the program. Um, if you're going overseas, your degree is going to matter a little bit more if you need a visa. So ask us based on what you want. Um, so Sophia is asking, my degree allows me to do an internship during my semester and gives me credit for it. I would have to do the internship un along under my lecturer's guidance. Is that a possibility? Yes, we have a lot of our participants are doing that for credit, okay? So no problem. We can arrange anything between your lecturer, the employers, uh, so that way you can not only advance your career, but you can advance your degree as well. So that's very good. And uh, and so Sophia, 100%. Um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn is asking, are the, pro are the program tailored to the applicants? For example, someone with a lot of life work experience, not straight recently out of school. Yes, honestly, for us, a little bit similar than Noah, we don't really care about like, we don't really care about what you studied, what you did, or maybe you studied something and you want to do something else. We don't care about that. What we care about is your drive, is the narrative of your profile. Like, what do you want to do it? Why do you want to do it? Why do you think you're going to be good at it? What are the experiences that you got maybe out of school or volunteering or e even school projects that you did? that's going to allow us to build up on that. So that's what matters. So Justin, answer is yes. Like the programs are very tailored um, to the applicants. The only thing that's important to note is that 
you know, those are those are still internship opportunities, you know. So if you've been around and if you've been in your career for, for, for a couple of years or a few years, you have to also understand that if you're going to do an internship through our program, it might also means that you're kind of starting from scratch with that company, right? Um, so that's the only thing that you need to kind of, re, you know, re remember. That's the, uh, so I don't want to deceive you if you have already many experience, you know, many years of experience in the field and you're like, oh, I don't want to do an internship, then maybe the program is not suited in that sense. But if you are open to kind of starting again and to kind of like, you know, enter a new field, then that's there. Um, so Nelly is asking, do you have any opportunities for musicians? That's a great question. We have a little bit less. Um, we have opportunities in the music business, definitely. So for example, if you wanted to work for like, a music publishing company or labels or maybe you know some um you know music magazines too uh, but musicians per se like in a sound recording studio for example we have less we have very limited opportunities in sound design um so i would say like as a musician think about what are other things you could do to enter the industry right you might be able to enter it through talent management through the music business, those are great shortcuts because then you get to know all the right people, the producers, and that can help you as your for your career as well, right? So I hope that answers it, Nelly. Any other questions, guys, before we have three more minutes together? Uh, just want to make sure that, you know, I think we answered most of the questions in the chat. If you have questions about scholarships, about, okay, one question. How long minimum is the overseas internship versus local? That's a great question. For local, you could do three months. You could do sometimes two months for local. Um, I think Australian companies are quite open to two months sometimes. For overseas, it would be three months minimum. And you could do it up to six months. Um, the reason why overseas we need three months is because it's a hassle for you to move already. And believe me, you would regret all of our participants always tell us like that it passed by in a second. So the longest you can be there, believe me, you want to be there because it is such an incredible experience. So three months, I would say, is, is the minimum for overseas. And then for local, you might be able to find for two. So Nelly's asking, we'll take this last question. Nelly's asking also, would there be opportunities to travel further down the track in placements? Say we initially want to choose Melbourne. Could we travel overseas later through the program? Yes. We have recurring, of course, participants. They start with a local program. They do that first. And then afterwards, they do the program again, of course, at a very different tuition because then we've already done all the curriculum together. We already done a lot of the work that, you know, it, the tuition is there for. And then we only typically have a tuition that's just for the relocation processes, the visa and the insurance and all of those things. So absolutely, we had participants that did first local and then afterwards went overseas the year later and vice versa. We had also people who started with overseas and then came back to us and say like, hey, I want to do it locally. And then afterwards, because they wanted to kind of come back and do something local so they could get a job out of it. Um, so we love our Australian programs because we see in Australia that a lot of our employers do end up hiring our participants. Not always, of course. We I don't want to make fake promises to you guys, but we're seeing a lot more, for example, than our US programs. Um, so that's something that's very cool. Here in Australia, internships are often a pipeline to recruit. And that's great because it's a trial period for the employers, right? They can see who you are, how you work for two to three months. Um, we even had students who ended up working freelance until they finished up their studies and then got hired. So we had fantastic success stories, including with Pitch, for example that hired a couple of our interns. Um, so yeah, definitely, I think is, you know, it's definitely an investment, but it's for me, you're investing in your education as well. Um, and I think that it's a matter of like, if you are going to, to do this investment, then of course, be smart about it and get everything you can out of it, which means the internship, all the resources that we give you, all the network that we give you, because that's the most important thing in this industry. And really the continued support that we offer to our participants throughout their journey. So guys, thank you so much. I think it's at the hour right now. If you have any questions, please go ahead and book a call here. We have the QR code right there. Um, this was an awesome conversation. Ask us questions, interact with us, follow us on Instagram. Like we're, you know, 
don't hesitate to ask us questions. We're here to help as well. Even if you don't do the program, if you have questions, you can always contact us, okay? We're here on a mission to help students and fresh grads, and that's really important for us. So thank you so much for like being there for one hour. I know it was a lot of content. Ina, thank you very much for your time in presenting and uh, hope that this was helpful and that you got some good info. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye, all.